Imagine the subject you're wanting to film or photograph is a piece of beef. You might want to take a photo of that piece of beef with like a 16 to 35. So we could have some crushed chili flakes, we could have some cumin, a little bit of paprika, or you could use a 70 to 200 and use a little bit of salt and pepper, you know, and go all old fashioned on it, traditional. And clearly, if you could take anything away from this video, it's that I'm no Michelin star chef. Pretty much you could... I've got pepper everywhere now. You could take a photo with theoretically any lens that you want. But the lens, depending on whether you use one of these or one of these or even a prime lens, will just give your photo or your video the shots you're getting a particular look. Whether that's more depth of field, more compression. And sometimes when you've been putting just rosemary and thyme on your sirloin steak, get a little bit bored. It doesn't quite, you know, excite you as much as it used to. So you don't use it ever again. You just put it on a shelf and forget about it. Well, imagine that the seasoning in question is actually this lens, specifically the Sony G Master version one. And if I'm honest, this video isn't about the different types of 24 to 70 f 2.8s, because ultimately this isn't the best 24 to 70 f 2.8 there is out there on the market. There's many brands out there who make a version of this lens and Sony now have the version two G Master out, which is obviously meant to be better than the version one, but we digress. But this lens, this one right here was my workhorse for so long. I got this lens about a year after picking up my first camera and it cost me over twice the amount that I actually paid for my first Sony camera. It was a big investment at the time. I gotta say, I got that one and this one and uh, what was I thinking? And I filmed my first ever YouTube videos. I photographed my first two years of weddings with this lens. And anybody, whether it was on the channel or who I met in person, or just people who's wanting to get into doing photography or wanting to buy their first camera, when they said, what lens should I buy? I always say a 24 to 70. It just works for so many things. It's possibly the most versatile lens out there. I had the 16 to 35, which I'm using right now. I got a bunch of primes. I got the 85 f1.8. And when I was out making videos or going out and doing things, I just couldn't be bothered with carrying around two heavy zooms all the time. So I decided to just put this thing on my shelf and forget about it. Let it collect dust for probably over a year. And then one day I decided to sell it. And he came to the day before I was meant to be selling it to this guy on Facebook. I went out with one of my friends to take some photos and he pulled out his 24 to 70. I can remember that moment really vividly. He was going around taking photos, doing so much in such a small amount of time. He did a few bits of video, was showing me on the back of the camera and I would just stood there with my 16 to 35 and my 85 mil, just clueless almost, really super deflated. I was just hating photography at that moment in time. I just didn't want to pick up a camera. And it's not because I don't like shooting with them lenses. Like I use a 16 to 35 on every single YouTube video. and I use an 85 mil for every single portrait shoot and wedding. But sometimes things just don't fit your workflow and then you get into a bit of a rut and that's a really bad feeling to have. So I went home, grabbed my 24 to 70, told the guy I'm not selling it at all ever. Dusted it off well and truly, put it back on my camera, went out and I was back in love. And now this thing, as battered as it is, goes everywhere with me. The thing is, a 24 to 70 is a very neutral lens. It's not too wide and it's not too telephoto. It's a good all rounder for most things and it's an incredible lens for people to stop. Then as you progress as a photographer, as a filmmaker, you get a vibe for whether you want something wider or more telephoto. And at that point, you can either get something like a 70 to 200 or a 16 to 35. And if you're not bothered about zooms, if you want to get into using primes, this covers a wide variety of the traditional primes. Them being the 24, the 35, the 50, and almost an 85, because this only goes to 70 mil. But this one single lens will allow you to find out what you enjoy using more or what gives you your individual unique look. Now, most brands offer an F4 version of this lens. I'd say if you're wanting to do something which is fairly low light, if you're wanting to shoot indoors, then an F2.8 is obviously gonna be a better match for you over the F4. But if you're not wanting to break the bank and you're more bothered about just getting into photography, you're wanting to go out and take photos of the landscapes, then the F4 will be perfectly acceptable and usable for you. But I've got a full video about the difference between F2.8 and F4, and I'll leave a link just up here down here if you want to watch that.